Miss Alam here. So today we are going to review what we learned in class this week, and this video is for the saxophone. So if you do not play the saxophone, you're in the wrong video. So you need to go back to my channel and try to find the video that's for your instrument instead. So saxophones, go ahead and get that instrument out, get that reed soaking in your mouth, and here we go. So we remember the first thing we do with saxophone before we even get the sax out, even get the neck strap out, even get any of that stuff out is, or sorry, even get the neck out is we put the neck strap on, right? So go ahead and set that neck strap around your neck. Make sure you pull your hair back in out of the way if you have long hair and keep your neck strap on your neck. Remember to adjust the neck strap, we can hold on to the buckle or hold on to the clip and pull this slider buckle up and down to get the saxophone to go up and down. Okay, so a good rule of thumb is you want the clip to be hanging about two, two or three fingers above where your belly button is. Right, mine is a little low, so I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. That's a good rule of thumb. However, you can always adjust it once you put the saxophone on to see where you want it to be. Now, first things first, as we know, what I like to do is after the reed is already soaking in my mouth, which I'm going to do right now. Oops. Okay, so I get my reed soaking. First thing I like to do is take the body of the saxophone, put it down on my lap like so, on my lap like so, All right? Not sideways, not down, not keys down, have it elevated up so that my right knee or my right thigh has the bell of the saxophone draped over. I find the little hook and I clip my neck strap onto that hook. That's what I always like to do first before I even get the neck or any of the other pieces of the saxophone out. So now, oh, a little too high. Okay, saxophones. So now, what you want to make sure you're doing saxophones is you have a nice chair. You have a nice chair that doesn't have armrests or anything that's going to get in your way. And you want to make sure that you sit forward on the chair so that when you're sitting forward on the chair, the space between um, your legs or between your knees is nice and open. And this part of the chair is not there knocking against the saxophone. Okay, so to make sure your knees are nice and neutral, not super close together, nice and neutral so the saxophone can fall in between without hitting this part of the chair. Okay, all right saxophones. So anyway, now that I'm here, okay, my reed was soaking in my mouth, I can now put my neck and my mouthpiece together, the neck and the mouthpiece together, and the ligature, making sure that my ligature is nice and low underneath that curve that you see in the reed. Ligature is nice and low. My ligature could even afford to go a little lower, actually. Ah, let's see this improvement. Here we go. Ligature is nice and low underneath the curve in the reed. The reed at the top is nice and aligned with the top, the black top of the mouthpiece. See that there? It's not sticking up. It's not funny in all directions. We're nice and lined up. Then I can hook the neck into this part of my, into the full body of the saxophone. And remember, when I hook the neck into the saxophone, before I tighten, I want to make sure, a good rule of thumb is to have this stick right here, this silver stick from the body of the saxophone, in line with this raised part of your neck. You don't want it to be all sideways like that. You want to make sure it's in line with that raised part of your neck so it makes a nice good line and then tighten your screw. Okay saxophones. So now we are here and we are ready to start playing. Okay saxes, so we remember the way that we hold the saxophone is we take our right hand, my right hand is waving at me, and my right hand the right thumb hooks underneath this hook at the bottom and my right fingers hover over these three pearls. My right pinky lays gently on this padded key down here, padded key down here. These fingers are hovering over the holes, they're not grabbing them or pushing them, they're just hovering over the pearls. All right. Now we know saxophones, my right hand is the one that can control 
the angle of the saxophone. It controls the angle of the saxophone. Okay? My right hand is the hand that helps the saxophone float in front of me. Right? It's floating in front of me. It's not up against my thigh. It's not against my stomach. It is floating in front of me. When your saxophone is floating in front of you, it can be floating in front of you when you're sitting down as well. It's floating in front of me. It's not knocking on this part of the chair right here. It's floating in front of me to the point where it naturally floats so that the mouthpiece naturally comes into my mouth. Okay, saxophones? So that's all controlled by the right hand. Okay, so now for the left hand, we know the left hand goes on the left thumb rest right here, this black circle, and my other three fingers wrap around, and if we place them from bottom to top, we put the pinky on this nice long pad right here, pinky right here, the ring finger goes on the next hole up right here, the middle finger goes on the next pearl up, and then we Skip that little baby pearl, skip that little baby pearl, do the splits, and put your first finger on the next one above it. Some of you have an extra pearl up here, some of you have an extra little key up there. That one is not pushed, okay? We want to make sure we're on this pearl, the one that's in line with that stick, right on top of that little baby key, okay? So now, using my right hand to float the saxophone in front of me, if I push down the first finger, I should be able to get this note. Not successful. Could have been because you're accidentally pushing stuff in your bottom hand and pushing all this stuff like crazy. You want to make sure that they are just hovering there. You don't want to accidentally press these keys on the side. You don't want to accidentally press anything. You just want it to be hovering. One more time. The note should sound like this. Let's go ahead and hold that note as a whole note and we can hold it for four beats. Remember, a whole note looks like that at the top, if I can get this in the right spot, that at the top, and it lasts for four beats. Here we go, let's give it a go. Press down your first finger, All right? Not finger skating, just first finger for the first key. Let's give it a go. A one, or two, or a breathe. Something went very wrong. What was wrong, what could have been wrong, if that note didn't come out and something went very wrong, is your embouchure, which is our mouth shape, may have been incorrect. Remember, for the saxophone, we think vo -we, right? Vo -we, and we think the vo shape, and then we whoop, and close it around the mouthpiece. Vo, and then whoop, and close it around the mouthpiece, so we have these nice lines on the sides of our mouth. We don't want to be and think all oh, into the mouthpiece and have like a nice low chin and with puffy cheeks. We don't want that. We want the to curl our bottom lip around our teeth. Think bo, bo, and then bo, hmm. And the top teeth are touching the black plastic right here. Top teeth are touching black plastic. Right? Hmm, hmm, bo. And then you're ready to go. Let's try to hold that note for four counts one more time. A one, or two, or ready, set, breathe. One more time. Ready, set, breathe. Make sure you have those teeth on top. Now let's put down another finger. Remember, we're doing the splits around the little baby key. We don't touch that baby key. We take our first two fingers and do the splits around them. Our next note should sound like this. Oh, excuse me. Let's give it a go. Four beats. A one, a two, a ready, set, go. Thank you, thank you. Make sure you use your tongue to start your air by tapping the tip of the tongue on the tip of the reed. All right, you're sitting up nice and tall, making sure to, when you breathe, you and inflate your stomach like a balloon and then bring your air out with direction, not you want strong, powerful forward air. And now if we put down the third finger as well, we should get this note. Mm -hmm. 
One more time on that note for four counts. A one, a two, already set. One more time. Ready, set. Oh, excuse me. One more time. Ready, set. Right, so even as a teacher, sometimes I squeak and I squawk and I make mistakes. But that's okay because we just need to recover. So now we were doing whole notes which hold for four counts each. But we remember in class we also learned a different kind of note called the half note that holds for two counts each. Half note looks like that. And it holds for two beats. Half note, two beats. If we hold and play a couple half notes followed by a whole note, like what you see up here, Half note, oh, excuse me, half note, half note, whole note, right? Toi, 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 toi. If you do that, going through the three notes that we just played, you should be able to achieve hot cross buns. Let's go ahead and give that a try. Okay, saxophones, let's give that a try. Hot cross buns. Hot and cross are half notes, buns is a whole note. These get two beats each, these get two beats each, and the third finger gets four beats. Let's give it a go. A one, a two, already. One more time. Ready, breathe. from me sitting up straight, blowing my air fast, and keeping my embouchure in the right shape. I'm not squeezing on the reed super tight with my lips. I'm not going too loose and going and puffing my cheeks into the saxophone. I'm not doing any of that. I'm keeping the nice bow shape and firm corners, but letting the reed vibrate to blow through the saxophone. I know you heard the difference between attempt number two and attempt number three. It's okay if you sound like attempt number th two, if you know that your goal is to sound like that third time we played together. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you wanna get ahead for next week, you can use the same three fingerings to learn Mary Had a Little Lamb if you'd like. <laughs> squeaks and squawks in there but that's okay because I'm getting better every day and so are you all right saxophones as you know to put it away first thing you do you want to take off the reed put your reed away in the reed case take off your mouthpiece take off your neck and then use your saxophone swab which is around here somewhere I can't find it take your saxophone swab swab through the instrument and put it away for another day I will see you next week saxes